Uh, we're back again, and this is Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis, and welcome. And just for those tuning in for the first time, you are one of uh, just about one million people who've connected with the show over six years. 6,000 business leaders and entrepreneurs have been on the show, and we're going to keep counting. Tick, 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 tick. As Nathan Gobes, my executive producer, mm -hmm. keeps looking and talking to all of you. Our next guest, Ralph Verilli, uh, Managing Director, Madison Park Group. Welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. Great, thanks. You guys have a great show. Uh, you know, you, you told us you just came back from Paris, so you're doing a lot of international work. You mentioned Berlin, Paris, London. Yep. Tell us again about your practice. Yeah, thank you. So just very briefly, we're an investment bank based out of New York, but I'm based here in Boston. We do work exclusively with enterprise software companies. My practice specifically works with manufacturing, engineering, and IoT companies. So again, although we cover a variety of domains, my practice focuses on those. And we're seeing a lot of interest in companies in, the, in Europe and even Asia have interest in being acquired by companies here in the United States. Because the buyers are here, the clients will typically retain us. So we do do a lot of work in Europe, again, for European clients that are looking for investment or looking to be acquired by companies here in the United States. But not the other way around? We don't see you know, a lot I have of that. a client right now that's uh, potentially going to be acquired that I always thought would be a great international acquisition. Yeah, we, in, at least in my practice, our firm, you know, there's interest, but we don't see it the other way. I think primarily, you know, it's certainly in this, the United States is still probably the leaders in, in my practice, engineering and manufacturing software. So well, that's, that's probably why we, correct. Yeah, You're right. So that's why mine was not in engineering. Yeah. And IoT, it, right? We're currently on the forefront of IoT. So there's a lot of interest in bringing outside companies here. Is it, it, did you focus on that niche because it's much more intellectual and specialized? I focus on that niche for a couple of reasons. First, my background is engineering, mechanical engineering. But I was also, prior to becoming an investment banker, I was a software operator. I worked for a number of companies here in the Boston area. I started a company which we took, I, we helped com take a company public. I also started a company that was acquired by Siemens. So I know the space really well. Right. And we think we have this model that for an investment bank to truly be able to convey the value to possible acquirers, you really need to know the market. And with my background in engineering and software, as well as my partner's experience with capital raising and finance, it's a great combination. We provide a lot of value to our clients that so, way. So how many are you in the firm? In our firm, we're 20 professionals. Again, based out of New York, but offices here in Boston, offices in Seattle. Is Boston, uh, Seattle, uh, just for those listening, Boston, Seattle, and New York, is, it, are they different markets, do you find? They are definitely different markets. Because I know when I've consulted on. in New York internationally, uh, Boston's a very unique town. But it, it certainly is. It really is. It's incredible. You know, certainly San Francisco, you know, we see a lot of, you know, consumer applications being done out of San Francisco. You know, Seattle has consumer applications with a little bit of business where Boston is primarily business focused. Again, just to bring it back, you know, Boston is truly the engineering software capital of the world. There's <coughs> so many companies that were based here, started here, are growing here. Companies moving their headquarters here. Uh, Dassault Systems moved their headquarters, the North American headquarters to here in Paris. As you know, PTC is right downtown. <coughs> so this is really the epicenter of engineering software. Do you feel it's going to stay that way? And you know, a lot of people talking about the changing economy. I definitely think that Boston is going to continue its, its dominance in engineering software. Um, you know, I think as a lot of us are seeing, there's a transformation here in the Boston area going from software to life sciences and pharma. Uh, you know, so, so although we were probably the engineering software or the, the software capital of the world 20, 30 years ago, that's no longer the case as we're seeing life sciences and pharma is becoming very, very prevalent in this area. Right. Uh, again, maybe back to my, my question. Do you see, uh, uh, what are the, some of the uniquenesses do you see to this market to for the, entrepreneurs, you know, business? Um, it's interesting. I was just on the phone with an entrepreneur coming on the way down here, and, and what we're finding is um, good businesses will always have interest. You know, it's the companies that don't have, aren't very well run or aren't really growing where they think there's interest and there's not. So, you know, we always say you, you really want to run a, a good company and the acquisition opportunities will come. You know, that's one thing. You know, and people ask about the economic trends. Uh, you know, for strategic acquisitions, we think they might drop off, but they'll always be there. You know, we are seeing a little bit of slowdown at the higher end. You know, let's call it the plus 300 million 
400 million type deals. But for the entrepreneurs, you run a good company, the acquisition opportunities will come. But there's also a lot of planning, Jeffrey, that needs to be done, right? You can't just wake up one day and say, hey, I'd like to get acquired. Right. right. You need a couple of years planning. And again, we, we well, that's what I tell my clients and they're not all in your field. Yeah. You can't just wake up one day you and cannot. say we're going to sell. It takes no. a lot of preparation. Exactly. And, you know, we actually have a workshop that we call preparing for acquisition where we'll work with our clients for a year, 18 months ahead of when they want to sell. Right. Just to make sure that we have everything lined up, everything cleaned up. We're speaking with the right partners. It's like staging a house. It, exactly. Isn't yeah. it? But a lot more complicated. Right. Right. Yeah. But it, so, but it is. Yeah. So that's a service that we provide, you know, very often for companies that you know, are interested in eventually getting acquired. Again, it's preparing for acquisition. It's a workshop that's really well received by our clients worldwide. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, money, uh, valuations. Do you find the markets changing a little bit? I, I know outside of your field, I've seen a little softening over the last few months. Yeah. So um, I think there's two vectors to it. There's certainly the, the domain or the market that you're in and the size. We are seeing, again, as I mentioned earlier, softening at the higher and the, the larger companies, you know, plus 300, plus 400 million dollars. Right. At the low end, we're not really seeing that right now. I guess I should also say so that- you're you know, still seeing the same multiples. We, we are, um, again, for those good companies, right? As right. I say, I have this saying, everyone only talks about the companies they see on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Right. Right. The guy's getting five, six, seven, eight times revenue. You don't hear about all the other ones that are there that are two, three times revenue, but they're out there and there's more of them than the other guys. Right. Um, so, and I've seen more of that yeah. in my end because I have a more general practice. There you go. Now, now we will see softening for those, those, those guys that aren't commanding right. the high valuations, but they weren't in a good spot to begin with. Right. You know, so. uh, now you deal with banks too. We do. Do you, uh, anything for our listeners about the different banks you find? You know, is it different dealing with European banks versus, let's say, domestic banks? Oh, without a doubt. Without you don't mind me doubt. asking you that? No, no, no. No, of course. Um, yeah. The banking it, world I always find very interesting. It is, right? There's, you know, again, people talk about relationships and, you know, we see relationships being a little bit more important in, with the European banks. Um, you know, in the United States, you know, we talk about covenants and, you know, there are certain banks that will say, hey, you didn't meet those covenants. We need to talk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have this other saying that, you know, you, you owe me $100,000. You know, you have a problem. You owe me $5 million. We have a problem. Mm -hmm. Right. So the idea of finding a bank that you know is going to be collaborative with you if you run into difficult situations is really important. So we deal a lot with private equity firms. And God knows there are hundreds of if not thousands of private equity firms out there, but we spend a lot of time trying to understand what our clients' needs are and interests and matching them up with the right private equity firms or the right banks, right? And, and different clients have different interests. Some clients are purely interested in, in the financial aspect. Some clients want other things that the banks or the PE firms can provide. Understanding who you're getting into bed with is really important. Now, in your field, uh, you're in a specialty niche. You're doing a lot of international work in the engineering area. Do you run across the same competitors all the time? Is, is it a crowded field or is it just a few and you just know, you all know each other? In our world, in my world, again, my firm does work in a num number of different industries, but certainly in the manufacturing and engineering world, it's a pretty small world. What we're finding interesting is the private equity firms are becoming very, very interesting in engineering and manufacturing. And I say that because they've come to realize that engineering and manufacturing aren't going away. The world needs products. And more people are going to continue to design. People are going to continue to manufacture. So the private equity world has become very interested in engineering and manufacturing. And their driving up valuations is high, if not higher, than the strategics are. They are. They, they certainly are. You know, and then we're seeing private equity co firms come in and try and be preemptive. And, you know, I always say to the entrepreneurs, never let someone get you into a, a corner where you don't have options. Right? You want to find an advisor that's going to help you figure out the options. This is going to be the most important business decision you've ever made, selling your company. You really want to make sure that you have options. Right? Going with the first person that asks you to go out on a date is a really bad idea. Right, right. Uh, you know, great practice, Ralph. Uh, if someone's looking for you at Madison Park Group, how would they find you? You can go to our website, uh, Madison Park GRP, not mm -hmm. group, but madisonparkgroup.com. Uh, and, you know, you can just uh, reach me via my email, which is rvarelli, V-E-R-R-I-L-L-I, -L -L -I, at madisonparkgrp.com. After you close a deal, would you be willing to come in and talk about sort of like the life cycle of a deal? Oh, very happy 18 to. months, structure that deal, how it all went? Very happy to. I think that'd be very 
of, of great value to entrepreneurs right. because people don't know what they don't know. Right. And we spend a lot of time educating entrepreneurs. Remember, on the process. a lot of these, a lot of the stuff that I just asked you to come back and present, you'll find in books three to four to five years after the fact. Yeah. You'll yeah. see them talked about at universities two to three years after the fact. Right. I like to try to get something on air as, you know, that's more real time. Yep. If you could do that. Yeah, happy to, happy to. It'd be a very interesting case study. Yeah, and we could, right? maybe we through. can make it a little bit longer and you can go through the, the mechanics of the deal. I think that'd be great. That'd be great. Great. And everybody, we've been speaking with, uh, with Ralph Verrilli, uh, Managing Director, Madison Park Group. Very interesting stuff and a lot of international work. My name is Jeffrey Davis. I want to thank the fellows over at Tarlow, Breedhart, and Rogers for sponsoring this segment. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after these messages.